Bengaluru degree, one is from Commonwealth, but a prestigious one, okay, and one from Anna University. Okay. So he will be telling you all this and he will he has so many uh, papers in hand, like he has published in the very international, so many papers, uh, irrespective of many sub uh, say, uh, subjects and themes and all everything, and now he is focusing on see, such kind of uh, giving awareness and leadership program all over the uh, country. Okay, he has so much of expertise and bringing so much of energy of here to give you all that awareness. Okay, so you, I think, I hope that you will have a better interaction with him and you carry out your role, sir. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. So I see uh, they've come from 20 people. Okay. So I think uh, about 60 people registered, yes? That's why I, I can't see a lot of people, which is okay. So can we, we actually switch off all the phones? If it's okay, please. Yeah, we don't want to have any, any distractions. So before uh, proceeding any further, um, let me um, put a few things in perspective, okay? So this year, I represented India in, at the University of California, Berkeley, on an environmental level. Okay. And uh, when I was talking to the head of the schools there, um, I, I just came back to my institute in the US. We thought we should just put something together for Indian researchers, Indian students, you know, postgraduate students, PhD researchers, and young faculty. And, uh, and we prepared the syllabus, and we rolled out uh, the first of the training programs in DC, in Washington DC, uh, the University of uh, Washington DC, and it worked really well. So we, we had a good score, uh, we had about 45 people uh, attending the program, and it was pretty reasonably well received. And uh, <coughs> so my, my vice president and I, we sat together with a couple of teams, and we were just thinking, well, why should I not do something for India? You know? And that's how we started. So we prepared a syllabus for, uh, for, for to suit the Indian conflicts. And we just wanted to, you know, roll this out. And I'm doing this one here for uh, for uh, Ocean, uh, one for St. Joseph's College in Kori uh, in Kerala, and Delhi Institute of Technology. Uh, so I will be there. So we'll probably doing some there around April or May. Okay. What is the goal of this program? That's quite important. Okay. Let's understand this. I have two objectives. One, just to see if I'm able to create some awareness. Among them, because you're all either environmental scientists or chemists or physicists or electronic engineers or I don't know, mathematicians. I just want to have a good group. That is important. We need to have some, I need to be able to inculcate some interest in you on what environmental science is, what are the different ways of achieving it. That's one thing. Number two, provide you with opportunities to engage with different. Uh, different stakeholders, that is very important. Because along the line, as, as you actually grow, it will be important for you to engage yourself. You know, you could engage, you could, you could uh, do research, you could work with community, you could collaborate with your researchers and just come up with some solutions. Yes? So, before I proceed any further, I thought I should provide a timeline. What are we talking about? Why is this important? Yeah? I think you a background of what happened in the last two hundred years. Okay? Why are we talking about environment? Why is it important for us to discuss this and take for it? What is the learning that we've had in the last two hundred years? And why is it important for us in the, in the near future? These are the questions that we wanted to answer. So we thought we just took something to do, okay? So this is a three level program. Yes, level one is a basic level, it's for one day. Level two is something we're thinking about which we will which we will roll out in the next year. So it'll be for two days. And level three will be for B. We'll be thinking about the Okay? Okay, so let me talk to you about what happened in the last two hundred years, okay? That will give us a perspective of where we are. So we'll talk about key scientists and scientific institutions, I'll mm -hmm. touch upon that. I'll talk about policy makers and the political institutions, emission policies and responses and progress towards the targets. You know? What are the different emission levels which we have? Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitric oxides, and different different levels of pollutants. Okay? Now I'm going to start off from 1800, early 1800s, okay? To give you a bit of a bit of a history behind it. 
So, you know, you, the levels of appreciation that you have may not be better. That's the end. Okay. French scientist John Fourier described the greenhouse effect. That was early in 1824. Okay? And uh, he showcased how the atmosphere attracts solar energy to increase the surface temperature. So it was that, that long ago. Uh, we had a reasonably good understanding. He did an excellent work. Um, and in 1859, John Tyndall, I'm sure you all the Referred to. Uh, he performed ex experiments on radiant heat absorption, identifying water vapor and carbon dioxide as greenhouse gases. So it was 1859. He was just going back quite a long time ago. Yes, he did this. And it has taken about 150 years for us to even be able to appreciate the importance of it. <coughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking about. 96. Um, Arvinius, a Swedish scientist, who made this contribution to actually is brilliant. He describes how Fossil fuel produces carbon dioxide. This is one of the first indications of how humans impacted greenhouse gases. You know, before which we never really had a great understanding of humans' contributions on greenhouse gases, so the impact on the negative environment. So in 1896, he showcased that. In 1958, uh, US scientist Keeling made the first direct measurements of carbon dioxide absorption. Until 1958, it was never done at all. There were no experiments on understanding or identifying the amount of concentrations of carbon dioxide in the, in the environment of the atmosphere. So you can imagine how or the, 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 the improvements that we've been, we've been making from 1958 up until 1958 up until now, this tremendous amount of papers that have been published. We have about more than 1,500 topical publications that have gone in this field. Okay, question. Okay, so before I proceed, my friends, okay, you need to engage. If, if you don't engage, this workshop is going to be a disaster. I am going to be asking you a lot of questions, okay, and there will be a lot of discussions among you as well. That's one reason why we just got, got this, uh, the, the sheets here. Okay, you will you will team up among yourselves and then discuss and present present the results. And that's quite important. I want you to engage. There's nothing right, right, or right or wrong here. I want you to just discuss among yourself and engage. That's very important. That's why you've been split in different groups. You're aware of all of this. Then the homework. You're going to make the presentations in the afternoon. Okay, and we would evaluate. If you're not going to meet with the standards, unfortunately, you know it's going to have an impact on the certification and all that because you're going to take some videos and all that and just like this. It's quite important. Okay. Can you take this off? Um, uh, in the world. 
1987. How many of you know what Montreal Protocol? How many of you have heard about Montreal Protocol? Oh, excellent. That's really nice. Okay. So Montreal Protocol. So there was a, there was a, this is a classical and, and an important reading. In that, the researchers <coughs> discussed the depletion of ozone layer, the reasons or the contributing factors in terms of chemicals that have an impact on the depletion of ozone layer. This was the first time there was a research on this, and a variety of funding organizations started pouring in money on, on, on research on ozone layer depletion. The largest source, source of anthropogenic <coughs> greenhouse gases. What is anthropogenic? What do you mean by artificial? Artificial? No, human activity. Human Yes, okay. So, anthro means human activity involved, okay? Genic means cost. So, it's human made or man made or man cost, okay? So, anything, anything with the word anthro there, it means that there's an involvement of humans. Genic means genesis of the start of the cost. Okay? So the largest source of human made greenhouse gases in the US is gas followed by gas. Agriculture followed by transportation, electricity generation followed by agriculture, electricity generation followed by industry, electricity generation followed by transportation, or agriculture followed by electricity generation. What do you think? C. C. Maybe a C. Uh, you think it's electricity generation followed by industry? Okay. Any other thoughts? A. D? A. A. Agriculture followed by transportation. Okay. It is D. Basically, electricity generation followed by transportation. I'm going to explain this for The reason why I've included the United States in there is I just wanted you to appreciate that there's so much of production and industrial activity that's going on in the US. And therefore, it is the electricity generation that causes so much greenhouse gases all of the time. The United States uses a lot of cars. Okay. So we have a reasonably well laid out train railway system, or a bus system, or a public transportation. In the US, it's not the case. There's a lot of cars that are used in the US. And therefore, it is clear that the industrial production and transportation in the US is the cause of the main cause of the greenhouse gases. 88, the Vietnam Convention for the production of ozone layer. This is another key deliberation that went on. Okay, so Vienna Convention. I think one of the uh, exercises also, I don't know, we, did any meet with, with this exercise? Nobody picked this exercise, okay, that's fine. So this was important because of, this helped us come up with an environmental agreement, which was hugely monthly that was number of number of countries just got in. To, to understand what this was. 89, Montreal Protocol. So this was the first time that a report was generated with hydrophobic substance that decreased the ozone layer that came into force. Yeah? So a lot of research that was done, we had about 15 years before. The first Montreal Protocol and the second one, which deliberated on a number of reasons or the substances that caused depletion of ozone. So they, they identified key substances that were involved in the diffusion. And uh, we had a clear report. This is a classical report that you see on the right hand side. Uh, it's freely available on the internet. We just have a look at it if you want it. So 79, National Academy of Sciences, based in the United States. Uh, it reported elements connecting greenhouse, uh, global warming and greenhouse activity. This was quite important. I mean, they said both are tied. Now we know that the human causes um, are, are clean, have been clearly established. They wanted to know how to put these two together. The human cause greenhouse gases and the resultant uh, ozone creation. How to put these two together. This was the first time it was done in 1979. There was a lot of funding, um, funding involved in it. And they found out that well, they just linked all the thermal uh, radiation you can see here. Um, here. Uh, impacting, impacting the Earth's and the ocean surfaces getting warmed and the, uh, and the, and the concomitant cycle. So, okay, now, question here. Earth's climate has been stable over the history of the planet. It's changing as a result of natural and human processes. Will it stabilize over the next century according to the predictions of most scientists? Has been documented to have changed once due to the evolution of photosynthesized plants. 
its climate history is undeterminable because there's no method of studying the climate history of the planet. What is right? <coughs> B. Is changing as a result of natural human process any challenges on this? So, let's see what this Good. You have got a reasonably good level of understanding. Okay. How many of you are mathematicians here? In this group? Any non biologist knows the origin of what no environment is not just. Your electronics. Electronics. Any chemists here? No, no chemist. No chemist. What about economics? Economics or environmental sciences? Okay. Economics are proud. That's okay, they're probably uh, uh, That's okay. <coughs> right. So in 